Fixing low soil pH may not always be inexpensive, but it is pretty easy. But fixing high pH is another story. Well, I don't know, Darren. I mean, fixing high pH really isn't that bad, but it may take a lot of time. Whereas fixing low pH, you can do that very quickly. Here are the real keys when we start talking about high pH soil. Number one, let's figure out why did it get high in the first place. In a lot of cases, what we see is poor drainage. If you have poor drainage, what's going to happen is your moisture can't leave like it should. It can't filter down through the soil. It's going to come to the soil surface. When it evaporates off the soil surface, it leaves salt behind. Your salt levels are going to be raised. Quite often your sodium levels are raised and very likely your pH goes higher along with all that. This doesn't happen overnight either. It might be over a 50 year period you've been wet and now you've got a pH of 8.0. What do you do? Well, it's really a nutrient imbalance, Brian. You look at low pH soil, we've got excess hydrogen out there. That's easy to get rid of. In this high soil pH situation, we have excess sodium or excess magnesium. Those ones are tough to get out of soil. That's the real key here. And you talk about drainage. Yes, if we can get drainage improved so we could flush those out, that would be good. That's one way to think about it. how do I get rid of the bad. The other thing we think about is how do I raise the good things to try and get my soil back into balance. Okay, so it all starts with improving your drainage. If you can get tile in the ground, then over time, hopefully your soil pH is going to come down with the right cultural practices. Wait a second, what if you already have tile in the ground? Then it what might do you not, do? Well, it might not be close enough together. We deal with a lot of farmers in, for example, Minnesota, North Dakota, even South Dakota, where the cation exchange capacity is 30 or 35. Well, that means you have ridiculously heavy soil. We'll call heavy soil 20 cation exchange capacity. If you're at 30 or 35, that's 50, 70 percent higher than what we would already call heavy. So I'm just trying to say, instead of the 50 foot or 70 foot or 100 foot spacings you have, you might need 20 in some areas of the field. So if you've got a bad high pH spot, that's probably telling you you don't have enough tile there. And, and we see this because there are soil samples that we look at in those regions from a generation or two ago and the pH was much more neutral. So this can definitely change over time. It's not, well, my pH has always been A tier. Eh, it probably hasn't. There's probably something that you're doing to cause that. All right, so Darren mentioned sodium and magnesium. If you have excess sodium, you have excess magnesium, that's a big problem and that's a cause of high pH soil. How do you get rid of those? Well, you turn them into a salt. Salts are leachable, so they will flush out of that soil with good drainage. How do you turn them into salts? Well, you're going to probably have to put some sulfur out there. Let's say you put out gypsum, that's calcium sulfate. The sulfate could bind with either the sodium to form sodium sulfate or magnesium to form magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate, by the way, is Epsom salts. So either way, you're going to turn those nutrients into salts. You can flush them out and over a longer period of time, you absolutely can lower your soil pH. So I'm listening to Brian, just like you are there, thinking, okay, here's how we change things. That sounds like it's gonna take a long time. And then I remember, oh yeah, my brother has zero patience. He wants to see things change right now. Okay, Brian, so what is the right now change answer? One of the most simple things you can do is put on a whole bunch of elemental sulfur. Now we've done this on our own farm and we've taken low eights for pH down into the upper fives. In fact, we did go too far by putting a thousand pounds of elemental sulfur out. I'm not saying that is very cost effective, but all I can tell you is this. We've taken some bad, poorly drained soil, super high pH, spent money on tile, spent money on elemental sulfur, and almost immediately we turned that ground around and started doubling yields. So maybe try that on a small scale and maybe try lower rates of elemental sulfur to start with. All I can tell you is elemental sulfur does fairly quickly lower pH, just depending on the solubility of the elemental sulfur you buy. I find it very interesting because we farm some ground that our great grandpa farmed, grandpa farmed, dad farmed, so fourth generation farming some of the same ground. And it was interesting the advice my grandpa gave my dad and then my dad gave us on some ground, hey, don't spend too much money there. It's, it's just tight, sticky ground. There's no fix to it. And what he really meant to say is, there's no inexpensive fix to it and no super quick fix to it. Now, we did invest a little money, we did invest a little bit of time, but we have been able to turn some of this ground around. And it's something that you need to think about. What is the cost of acquiring new ground? How easy is it to find new ground? In many cases, it's much less expensive and it's a sure bet if you're gonna work on ground that you already control. So 
take some of those spots on your farm and deal with them. Find out what the problem is by doing some good soil sampling in those zones and then look at what you can do on a small scale first and experiment a little bit, but do your experiment and actually go for it. That way you find out in one or two years time, okay, does this work? Yes. Now I can repeat that on other areas of my farm. Okay, two other things that I'll mention here real quick. Ammonium sulfate also can lower pH fairly quickly. I prefer elemental sulfur, but ammonium sulfate could do it as well. Make sure you're testing your soil. If you already have excess sulfur, then maybe just fixing drainage and everything will flush through. The other thing is there is one other cause of high pH and a lot of times that's just, hey, we're now farming subsoil. We had major erosion issues, we're farming subsoil. How do you lower that pH? You just create new topsoil. That's not gonna happen overnight either. You need to use manure, you need to use cover crops, you need to reduce tillage or even go no-till. Do those types of things and then get all the rest of your nutrients, get everything else in balance and over time you'll see that pH start to come down. High pH spots on farms can certainly bring down yields and so can weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next.